Welcome back, everybody. Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Well, Oakland A's are gone, and I've been saying that they were gone for a very long time, at least a couple of years now. Uh, and then uh, last October, uh, Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred said that the uh, topic of talking about the A's staying in Oakland and Howard Terminal uh, the time had passed and they were done talking. And so uh, they went back to Las Vegas, Las Vegas. And, and here's the whole thing. Oakland's been dragging their feet. If they wanted a uh, uh, baseball stadium at Howard Terminal or anywhere else, they needed to get uh, certain things in, in order. And, and all of a sudden we are seeing um, the process in an accelerated uh, version because Nevada is interested in entertaining, uh, becoming a sports entertainment center, uh, not only just for gambling, but for sports. You know, they have uh, a Stanley Cup winning uh, hockey team right now, the Golden Knights. You know, they have uh, the former Oakland Raiders, which are the Las Vegas Raiders. And then soon, yeah, we're here's the only good part about the Oakland A's moving to Las Vegas, becoming the Las Vegas A's. Uh, the owners uh, at with the Raiders, Mark, uh, um, uh, well, Mark and uh, Oakland A's uh, owners don't get along because of the Oakland uh, Coliseum uh, issue. Yeah, and so um, Mark Davis was trying to get away from Oakland and he was, when he got Allegiant uh, uh, Stadium approved and, and built that <laughs> nearly $2 billion stadium, uh, <clears throat> he thought he was rid of the hauntings of the uh, A's uh, ownership, the organization, because they've always been clashing. And then uh, Oakland should have... Uh, used an EIFD, Enhanced Infrastructure Finance District. And, and by setting that up, it sets up uh, a way that uh, the taxpayers really don't pay anything uh, from uh, the Oakland uh, and Alameda County tax uh, viewpoint because you're not uh, uh, being taxed uh, directly uh, through your property taxes or uh, anything like that. And, and there's no increase uh, on sales tax locally if uh, uh, the business operates within that uh, uh, EIFD, the Financial uh, Public Finance District or the Public Finance Agency. And, and Oakland has a horrible relationship with Alameda County. And so that's why uh, uh, F, uh, a public uh, finance agency, a PFA, which is part of the EIFD and a mandated component because they are the taxing agency. They collect the money uh, for the EIFD. And so it's critical that uh, there's a, a joint cooperation. There used to be at the Oakland Coliseum, but because of Mount Davis, uh, there's been attention from city of Oakland leaders uh, and also Al the Board of Supervisors, Alameda County Board of Supervisors. And, and so uh, when they parted ways uh, with the Oakland Coliseum and, and uh, Alameda County sold to John Fisher's group, that was devastating because uh, that's something that, that should not have happened. Uh, and... Uh, they sold it uh, without offering it on the market. So it was an illegal sale to begin with. And it's been contested in court, but you know, neither here nor there. Uh, but the uh, baseball commissioner is right. And Mayor Shane Tao of Oakland is flat out lying that they, they had all the, the financing instruments in place because they had nothing in place. Shane Tao is lying about it, and she knows that she's lying about it. Now she she was part of the city council, you know, that did nothing to uh, speed up the uh, 
creation of the EIFD, the Enhanced Infrastructure Finance District, which would have funded everything that the Oakland A's needed, but also would have given uh, top priority benefits to housing. Uh, and so that was a, a, a component of the EIFD. And, and the EIFD, uh, it doesn't relieve uh, Oakland uh, uh, organization of uh, any other financial uh, requirements for creating that new ballpark wherever it may be. I have been advocating uh, more towards a more scenic area and an area that is really underutilized and has been underutilized for decades. And that's Oakland's uh, Middle Harbor Shoreline Park because that's a dead space. Nobody goes there. There's nothing there. There's no businesses there. There's, I mean, there's no there there. And so that creates a, a, an incredible opportunity to build a new stadium in a crown jewel area of Oakland and revitalize the Oakland waterfront. But uh, no, they wanted to go with Howard Terminal and, and then uh, Oakland A's, you know, they proposed only putting a, a two foot cap of concrete over all the hazardous waste and then build the stadium on top of that. And so I don't find that acceptable and I hope you, the public and the residents don't find that acceptable either. But anyway, in my day, I want to talk about, I knew that um, Oakland was, was done and uh, how selfish uh, ownership is because I experienced it back in 1987. My family, uh, we held the same seats in the Oakland Coliseum for the Oakland A's games. We bought season tickets. We held the same seats from 1968 up through the end of the uh, baseball season in 1987. And the reason why we stopped, because it was at that point where we realized that the owners and the management of the A's organization don't give a shit about any of you. They didn't give a shit about us. They didn't give a shit about uh, long-time ticket holders, season ticket holders. And we had best seats. You know, I was literally, the Oakland A's dugout was my cup holder. I just set my, my cup holder, my popcorn, my, my uh, uh, scorecard, everything right there on the side. And, and that was, that was, my place from 1968 to 1987. We didn't attend all the games, you know, because we couldn't. Uh, and then we were there for the bad years, like we're seeing right now. And, and but the the event that happened that caused uh, me to stop attending uh, the Oakland A's uh, baseball games because uh, uh, how the management and the owners view that you know they uh, there it's like. Uh, you're the sheep, and they're the farmer. They're just going to go and fleece you every year. You, know, you grow it back, but they fleece you and fleece you and fleece you. And, and that's what happened to us uh, with the All-Star Game because that's where uh, the big issue came about. There was a uh, uh, two weeks prior to the, the uh, actual All-Star Game, uh, 5,000 tickets were returned uh, from players and uh, uh, MLB uh, important folks. And, and so 5,000 tickets were came back to the Oakland Coliseum uh, for admission. And so rather than taking, and, and uh, because uh, those of us uh, who were season ticket holders, we were offered first uh, rights uh, for tickets. And uh, the tickets, unfortunately, because all the first deck was to go to VIPs and, and uh, players, uh, family. And then in my seat, actually sat the baseball commissioner of that time. And, and so anyway, we got stuck up on the third deck directly behind home base. Some of the worst uh, seats that you can get. And... and um, the sun is to your back. Uh, we were literally all up near the rim of the bowl, 
you know, at the top of, of there. And it was our entire section. And it didn't need to be. And, and here's why I say it didn't need to be. Because, you know, the, uh, the ticket office for the uh, organization had all of our um, information on how to contact us. Uh, our work numbers, our home numbers, even our credit card numbers were on file for uh, the tickets. And they they had us for, for year after year after year. And we were spending big money. I mean, what, it was uh, very significant, the cost of those tickets in 1987 for four seats at field level. You know, we were three rows from uh, the field, literally. You know, you know, there were times that fly ball or foul balls come flying by really quick, and then uh, pot flies were, were very common there. But uh, <clears throat> this, the A's were a very different team back then, and, and um, the the ownership uh, when uh, we started with the A's was Charles O. Finley, and he he was one of those disgruntled. Uh, owners that left Kansas City, and just like we have a bunch of disgruntled owners, you know, John Fisher, uh, because he didn't get a new uh, uh, stadium from us. And that was the same thing that brought the uh, Kansas City A's uh, to Oakland, because Charles O'Finley had tried for uh, two years to get a new stadium in Kansas City. And uh, it was very clear that it wasn't going to happen. So uh, he moved the team from Kansas City to Oakland. Oakland at the time was the newest stadium in 1967 when he uh, moved right after the closing of the 67 MLB season uh, that the uh, uh, Kansas City Athletics or Kansas City A's um, was going to move to Oakland. And it, it was also Charles O. Finley uh, early on where uh, it was Kansas City A's. And before they were Kansas City A's, they were the Philadelphia Athletics uh, in the early 1900s. And so uh, the, uh, Oakland A's history goes back very far long and, and very storied. But uh, Charles O. Finley, uh, he didn't like the previous owner, Connie Mack. Connie Mack was very famous, you know, for the Philadelphia A's. And so uh, Charles Finley uh, felt that uh, having athletics, the name athletics in the uh, team name uh, was uh, too much reference to Connie Mack. And, and so that's when he officially banned, officially banned the use of uh, the athletics uh, name. And he cut it down to A's because A's is, does not have any kind of reference to the former owner, Connie Mack, the original owner of the A's organization. So that's the history. And... and um, there's been good owners. There's been bad owners. Walter Haas uh, was one of those good owners. Um, uh, he received a, a really crappy team uh, from uh, Charles Finley, who died, and Walter Haas bought the, the team uh, and had to rebuild where um, Charles Finley had really decimated the, the Oakland team. The, the championship team uh, pretty much moved to New York or Boston, uh, and uh, some players went to Cleveland. So they were really dispersed. And, and then even our, our championship uh, 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 manager, Tony La Russa, who was well-loved here in the Bay Area, went to St. Louis, and as did uh, Mark McGuire. Uh, he went to St. Louis and, and several other uh, Oakland A's players at the time. And so very disappointing. And, and that came about because uh, Walter Haas died. And the takeover was, um, let's see, <sighs> he was taken over, uh, let's see.
Oh, yeah, Stephen Schott and Ken Hoffman took over uh, the team uh, after Walter Haas died. And uh, so from there, uh, that's where we started with the cheapskate ball called Moneyball. And I've hated the, the team since ever since the uh, they implemented the money ball with Billy Bean. I've never liked Billy Bean as a general manager. Uh, and I thought his butt should have been fired a uh, long time ago. And being a cheapskate. Uh, and then as soon as you get an up and coming, a good player, a really good player, and he should be paid more, what did the, the management do? Oh, go play somewhere else. We'll bring somebody else up. That's not the way to do it. You build uh, confidence and loyalty, team loyalty, by having a good uh, product for uh, the residents, for your fan base. And Oakland wasn't doing that. And they're, they're certainly not doing it now because the numbers are saying that exactly. Now they have the worst attendance in all of uh, MLB. And uh, Oakland's historic worst is going on right now. And then now with the, the finality of uh, the team going to be moving to Las Vegas uh, after the close of 2024, um, it's pretty sad. And um, the city could have done more and should have done more. Not that I... I support the team directly. I'll watch them occasionally, but I still root for them because I spent a, a lot of years in the in the grandstands watching my favorite players like Reggie Jackson and Vita Blue, uh, Walt Weiss. Uh, he was one of those. Jose Canzago, him and I had <laughs> some little issues there because uh, uh, when he was a rookie for the Oakland A's, he lived uh, in Baywood Village, where I lived, and I was the, the uh, HOA president there, so uh, we had a few conversations about him and his girlfriend Elizabeth, uh, her outfit, and so uh, yeah, I've had some uh, some interesting times with the uh, Oakland players and uh, sitting in the stands and, and paying their their salaries for a good inter entertainment product. And that's what they should be striving for, a good entertainment product. But yet, uh, money ball, cheapskate money ball prevails. Um, and that uh, was carried on with Lou Wolf. Uh, and he made things worse. Uh, he was one who just wanted money. He wanted to m make uh, the Oakland A's profitable. And then he was also responsible for... Uh, finding out the, the actual limits and the territories, protected territories by uh, San Francisco Giants was e extensive. And, and they couldn't even move down to uh, Fremont because the San Francisco Giants claimed uh, that uh, as their territory. And it was signed uh, contract uh, by early management. And so, and that's something that, that is everlasting. And, and so that's why uh, that never materialized in, in the South Bay. And a lot of people may not know that, but that that's the reason why. But uh, right now, Shang Tao, uh, <laughs> you lost the team just like Libby did. So uh, you, you and Libby together lost the Oakland A's uh, as partners. Mayor was uh, Libby Shaft. She did absolutely nothing. And Shang Tao, you did even less. So uh, saying, trying to say that uh, uh, MLB Commissioner Rob Man Manfred is uh, lying. Uh, no. The liar is you, Shang Tao. And you know, I'll confront you on this any day of the week. I was a mayoral candidate. She... Uh, uh, came out, talked about doing an EIFD for Howard Terminal. What did she do? Not a damn thing. So I, I hold uh, my point. And, and I know what I'm talking about. So anyway, Oakland A's are, are gone uh, after 2024. It's sad to see. I would have loved to 
uh, become your new mayor. I would have fought really hard to keep them in Oakland, and I would have fought for that new location at Oakland's Middle Harbor Shoreline Park, building a new deck like they did for uh, across the bay at, at uh, uh, where the Giants play. And so we could have had a premier crown jewel waterfront property right there, yeah, clean, safe, and, and in an environment where fireworks and even late night activities would not um, disturb the neighborhoods and the residences because you're out at the waterfront. Thanks for joining me today. We'll be right back.